Welcome to the Internet of Dings. This is an internet connected bell powered by a Raspberry Pi and some Python that triggers a ding every time it gets an email notification that somebody donated money to a local nonprofit radio station. But this bell isn't just for donations, you could trigger the bell for almost anything. Want to know when someone ats you on social media? Want to annoy your significant other with a firebell alarm clock? And if there's something you don't like? Is there something that you don't like? How about when someone subscribes and hits the notification bell? But why did I make this? Well, let's head over to the workshop and I'll tell you everything about it. How I built mine, how you can build one, and the story behind it. Last year, I helped a local nonprofit radio station with their Radiothon to help them raise money to stay in operation. When someone called in to make a donation, you could hear the phone ring in the background. But when someone made an online donation, nothing. And as a citizen of the digital age, I couldn't have that. I actively avoid talking on the phone, and I'm sure there are dozens of us who'd rather donate online. And I'm a sucker for gimmicks like a phone ringing when someone calls to make a donation, so I thought I'd try to design a bell to go off for online donations. I asked if there was any kind of trigger when online donations were made, some way I could react to it in software. And yes, they said, there was an email sent for each donation. So I built Ye Old Bell Slapper, my first attempt at a Raspberry Pi donation notification bell. The thing worked great with a servo hanging off the Pi's GPIO, and it's been dinging for months now. But look at the thing, I only had time to barely get the thing working, and I never got to do it justice with a build montage since I built it and brought it to the radio station in less than a day. Anyways, the radio station christened the bell Clarence, after the angel in It's a Wonderful Life, and I thought Clarence deserves a bit nicer build quality. Plus, a number of people suggested I use a solenoid to ding the bell instead of a servo-based ding arm. My plan is to build a nicer Clarence 2.0 with a better circuit and more pleasant design. So the idea is to drive this solenoid with the Pi's GPIO to hit the bell. Ideally, I'll also preserve the manual bell operation. The original bell slapper design put a sharp metal arm above the bell, so it was hard to ding it by hand. And you might think just wire up one wire on the solenoid to ground and the other to a GPIO pin and you're done. But this solenoid requires one amp of current at five volts and you can't drive it using a Pi GPIO pin because you can only get through about 18 milliamps through a single pin at 3.3 volts. That ain't gonna fly. So instead, after looking around a bit, I found this circuit idea on Circuito. It drives the solenoid using the Pi's 5 volt power, which is attached directly to the USB power input, meaning I can pull the full amp I need to drive the solenoid. But it uses a MOSFET to control the switching on and off of the 5 volt power supply to the solenoid, and a diode to make sure the current from the spring loaded solenoid doesn't feed back into the switch and cause damage. There's also a resistor between ground and the gate to make sure the load is switched off if the GPIO is accidentally set to be an input. I have everything documented thoroughly on GitHub, so check it out there if you want the details. I'm going to first build the circuit on this breadboard to make sure everything works, then we'll work on a more final layout on this prototyping board. I'm going to put in the layout like it is in Circuito, even using the same colors of wire just to help clear up any ambiguity. The male-to-male -male jumper wires I'm using are from a bundle I got with an Arduino starter kit way back when, and the female-to-male -male DuPont wires I have for connecting the Pi's GPIO are from an old 40-pin DuPont ribbon cable. You can also make your own wires using a colored jumper wire kit, like I'll do when we get to the prototype board later. Looking at the circuit, the way this works is the Pi's GPIO pin 4 tells the MOSFET to close the circuit to provide 5 volts to the solenoid whenever it's set high, and when it's set low, the MOSFET opens the circuit and the solenoid doesn't get power. But because this is a push-pull solenoid, this spring pulls back the rod when the power is removed, and that actually dumps power back into the system because of the induced current due to magnetism. So there's a diode here to protect the MOSFET from getting hit with a rush of current when the solenoid springs back, and it's called a flyback or clamp diode. Okay, so we have a circuit wired up, but it's not going to do anything unless we write the software to control it. I'm going to write a Python script on Raspberry Pi OS, and since my intention is to have this thing operating in a little closet far from a monitor, I'm going to set it up remotely from my Mac using SSH. I'm logged into the Pi, and I created a Python script called ding.py. This script sets up the GPIO, sets pin 4 to an output, and then switches it high and low with a short pause between. Without that pause, it doesn't switch long enough for the solenoid to actually actuate, but I don't want it to go too long because then the solenoid would stick against the bell and mute it. Finally, at the end, I use the cleanup method to tell the script to reset the GPIO to its normal state. 
Now with the script in place, I can run python ding.py and the solenoid goes off, yay. So we have the basic software in place and I already have an email check program for my first bell version, so I'll plug that into the bell later. But now it's time to build this thing for real on prototyping board with more permanent soldered connections. Before I get started, I should note that I'm far from the best at soldering and circuit layout. So if you wanna see better examples of both, maybe go check out some other makers YouTube channels. Some people I love watching are Ben Eater and Great Scott, but there are dozens of amazing makers on YouTube. For the final design, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Zero W for its compact size and built-in Wi-Fi, so I have to solder on a 40-pin GPIO header. You can actually get these things pre-soldered from some places and save the hassle, but I figured I already have the soldering station set up, so why not get a little practice? To connect the prototype board to the GPIO header, I'm using one of these 2x4 8-pin headers. I bought a pack of them a long time ago for an RGB LED controller, and they're pretty handy if you just need a few pins from the Pi. It took a while because I kept messing up a couple of the solder bridges and burnt out the first MOSFET I tried, but now the proto board is working and that's about all I can ask. I was about to build my own enclosure from scratch, but then I found this open SCAD design from Aaron Patterson. He built an analog terminal bell using a custom circuit and no pie at all, so I spent some time learning the 3D scripting language open SCAD uses, and I modified it to fit my Pi Zero and the hack together circuit board I built. I printed a copy, then tweaked the design and printed a few more, fixing all the little problems as is the way with 3D printing, and eventually I came up with this enclosure. I super glued the solenoid to this little shelf and the Pi and hat fit inside this case. It looks a heck of a lot nicer than my first attempt last year, and maybe as I get better with OpenSCAD, I'll build a 3.0 version with everything under the bell for an even cleaner build. I plugged the email handling into the new ding code and made sure everything worked here at home. Once I was satisfied, I brought Clarence 2.0 to the radio station and set it up next to the phone bank. There it'll rest, broadcasting a little bit of the digital into the analog over the radio waves. The bell even got a call out during the radiothon. Speaking of that, don't forget that when you make that online donation, we'll hear a little ding from Clarence every time a bell rings. Well, that means we got a, a donation here at Covenant Network. This project turned out better than I even planned, and I even got to learn some open SCAD along the way. And everything I've done, all the code, the 3D models, the step-by-step -step guide for building your own notification bell, it's open source in the GitHub repository linked in this video's description. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. Okay, conclusion time. 3.0 to the radio station and set it up next to the phone bank. I was, I, oh crud, I haven't been recording the audio. Kids are running, have to go back a little bit. And you might think just wire, ah. just to help up clear, help, uh, uh, blah. you can also make your own, uh, I should probably read from the screen instead of trying to remember what it was while I'm looking over there. <laughs> oh, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try again.